Welcome to the 2024 F1 Belgian Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sagan and I'm joined once again by our captain Ajax. Indeed, indeed. We have a lot to talk about, especially uh, as the summer break, still the season began, where I have some quite, quite some announcements. But let's get into the Belgian Grand Prix first, as that's our main topic. Um, actually, <laughs> were there any news before the Belgian Grand Prix? Because I kind of, kind of remember. <laughs> any major news? Uh, uh, I should. Yeah, probably both did. Um, yeah, I'll just get to the to the video. Maybe, maybe we can actually like, remember throughout. Um, okay, as the Belgian Grand Prix began the last race before the summer break, we we're all expecting a kind of similar story to what happened in Hungary, like uh, in terms of the pecking order perspective, at least from our predictions. <laughs> uh, seemingly, uh, it wasn't the case. Even for the first practice, uh, we saw that there are four teams pretty close to each other in terms of pace, um, which was very exciting uh, at that point. Um, uh, but as we got to Saturday, it was raining, obviously. Uh, the third practice was interrupted by the rain, so uh, most of it actually didn't happen. Uh, stroll crashed, obviously. Uh, average stroll moment. In <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, uh, we didn't have much of a third practice, so uh, we had to wait for qualifying for some wet action, and uh, we got some, because uh, I'm pretty sure it was intermediates for the entire session, right? Uh, so, yeah, we got very similar conditions throughout the entire session, which lasted for, for an hour, so very interesting, that is. Um, beginning with Q1, which was... Um, Interesting. Uh, there, it was very close. It was it was changing like all all the time throughout the session up until the for the last moments. Um, and yeah, uh, I actually don't remember who got knocked out in Q1. Can't lie. Uh, yeah, it was Ocon. I think it, I think it was both Hasses, like Joe Sargent, the usual bottom two, and uh, I think Sunoda as. As Yuki himself said, he got, he got like uh, 60 replay penalties, so he technically started from Zandvoort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yep, yep, for suddenly, well, uh, yeah, Haas seems like a car that suits like one circuit and then doesn't suit the other. It's uh, pretty much changing every single weekend. And this time we got, yeah, we got two weekends in a row where the Haas was a very good car. And uh, this weekend it was not the slowest, definitely not the slowest, uh, probably like second or third slowest, but still a very... Big downgrade from uh, from those two P6s from uh, not that long ago. Yeah, um, not the greatest predictions from my side. <laughs> think about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually don't know how, how I actually did. Uh, we'll obviously see that. Um, okay. Getting into the thingy Q2. Do we have any shocks there? Um, actually, actually, we got like all the top teams in, in Q3 with like Hamilton being very close to being knocked out, I think. Was it correct? Or was it the Hungary? <laughs> actually, oh my god. 
my god. <laughs> where's my where's my memory doing? <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We haven't done our homework. <laughs> kind of unprepared, I guess. Um, yeah, we got we got both Mercedes and both McLarens and both Ferraris and both Red Bulls in, which is a pretty surprising thing to see Perez uh, up there with the others. Obviously, uh, it's more in the car, but we'll talk about it later. Um, and the other cars were like Alonso, I think, and. The dev was probably Ocon. Yeah, Alpines were pretty quick in qualifying, at least uh, compared to Haas, for example, which they're uh, close to constructors. Uh, not by points, by <laughs> position. Okay, uh, this is not <laughs> going well. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's get into Q3. Yeah, yeah uh, Q3, this is the the power wall finally we actually remember remember i think uh obviously i have max with the 10 place grid penalty so he wants to qualify the best he can uh for damage limitations obviously and uh pretty much, pretty much through the entire qualifying uh no one could even touch him it was clear of everyone uh even of uh in front of his teammate that's the usual thing but thanks to the red bull being particularly quick in the wet we saw Perez in to in the top three. Uh, yeah, that's that's a, a huge shock, and it did. And wow, um, I mean, it wasn't like a, the best performance from Sergio. Obviously, it was still like six tenths on <laughs> back, uh, like down max, and yeah. Yeah, seemed like the Red Bull was really the car for for the wet conditions. Yeah, it was also the new engine, but but yeah, the usual gap between Max and Perez was still there. It was just the Red Bull seemed very very quick in those wet conditions, which which obviously helped Max to get pole position by a huge margin over half a second ahead of Charles Leclerc. How did he get there? <laughs> Uh, the most random Ferrari pole position probably in a while. Uh, I have no idea how they get there, honestly. It didn't seem like the Ferrari has had the pace, uh, but Charles put an amazing lap and, yeah, quite frankly, destroyed signs and qualifying um, there. And yeah, uh, we got obviously uh, Max on pole position, Charles P2, then Perez uh, in the top three, as we said earlier. P4 and 5, I think those were the McLarens and Mercedes, like, before, right behind them, right? And with Carlos in P8, uh, quite way behind Charles. And then we had Alonso and Ocon, and the final two spots of Q3. So yeah, it was, it was quite mixed up, um, especially after last weekend, where it looked like McLarens were rapid and... Maybe we uh, we could say that Mercedes was uh, the second or third best car. We we don't know, uh, but this time we had a very different pecking order, both in the qualifying and the race, which was was exciting. I, I can't lie; it was it was great to watch uh, four teams that close to each other, uh, especially in the race. As we get to that, obviously. Um, so yeah, we can wrap up qualifying. Uh, I think in terms of statistics, it it still counts for for Max's pole position, or so yeah. So yeah, Charles just inherited inherited the pole position, but yeah, still a uh, still a great job from Charles uh, who started on pole from for the race. Uh, not like the quickest Ferrari ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I got the the Grand Prix the race itself. Points. <laughs> oh yeah. For, uh, oh, okay. Um. <laughs> sorry. I uh, I forgot to. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. Um. All right. Uh. 
Do you? Oh, how about some P4? Oh, yeah, okay, good job there. Um, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, okay, that's one each, right? Uh, now we can get to the Grand Prix. Um, it was mu much different conditions than on Saturday. It was fully dry. I think it still rained in the in the morning. It looked like it was a bit wet uh, at at uh, at some places uh, during the F two race. That was much earlier that, in that day. But yeah, uh, bone dry for the race. Different conditions. We pretty much didn't know what the picking order was for the for the race pace. But I think a lot of people actually expected Max to win from eleventh, especially as uh, after what happened the last two races at spa so it's a three out of three uh max or seven uh grid penalties and unfortunately this one didn't end up in no victory um at the start i predicted a lap on collision it didn't happen so i can get that off immediately uh fortunately yeah it it could have been a crash hamilton's front wing was very close to charles but <laughs> unfortunately it wasn't uh uh yeah it was yeah Lewis wouldn't crash oh yeah we can get that off immediately as well <laughs> yeah maybe it will one day <laughs> you never know uh <laughs> all right um uh, at the start lando choked the start once again uh went to the gravel um uh, obviously i think he had piastri on the inside once again but just this time didn't quite turn in i didn't know what i was why did he just go into the gravel probably just a mistake not concentrating enough i don't know just and not the greatest thing when you're between the championship still with like 10 races to go i'm not saying there was there's a championship fight but if he wants to believe there there is a there's one he needs to deliver and uh, he didn't uh, that day, um, pretty much ruined his entire race from that point. Uh, but who got a great star was Lewis Hamilton, <laughs> who immediately went to P2, uh, gained two places, and on lap three overtook Charles Leclerc for uh, for the lead of the race. Uh, that was quite a moment after <laughs> he won Silverstone just like three weeks ago or two weeks ago. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep yep indeed uh in the back of the grid i think there were not there's nothing much to talk about obviously joe with a mechanical failure he made it to the pit so no uh, no real flags or no safety cars unfortunately so uh nothing from that uh there were some battles in the midfield Ocon made like five billion overtakes during that race and uh yeah it was it was pretty anonymous for for the midfield this time like alonso made a one stop finishing p9 and uh, like literally no one talked about it because yeah like it was it was a lot of happening up front even though there were not many overtakes like in total uh not not much fighting yeah there are a lot of like attempts or not just like half attempts like looking down the inside or just attempting overtake but yeah you know, they they shortened the drs uh the other six, uh, the entire thingy, like, how, how is this? <laughs> uh, the DRS line on the straight, basically, it was shortened so uh, drivers could overtake less efficiently than last year. Unfortunately, that meant that we didn't get much fighting. Uh, it was very difficult to overtake, even on such a such a high speed circuit that 
should provide good overtaking opportunities. Uh, every, a lot of cars went with uh, really thin wing setups uh, as well. Um, maybe apart from Red Bull, but Red Bull is generally a very good car and doesn't <laughs> need that much um, straight on speed. And, and yeah, we had obviously Max going through the field starting in P11. He was like, right behind Lando Norris, <laughs> come lap two or lap three. So, uh, yeah, that that was out of the way. We had the top eight separate from the rest, and then the strategic battles be began. Obviously, Lewis uh, with, uh, with Billy building up the lead ahead of Charles. It looked like Charles would fall behind others as well, but he actually managed to create a gap to Checo, who then actually fell through the order as well. Um, Piastri made some great progress throughout the race to finish uh, eventually in P2. Obviously, he finished P3 on track and on the podium. Um, yeah, Charles uh, as well. Uh, good race. Uh, finished eventually in P4. Uh, fortunately, the Ferrari wasn't quite quick enough, but inherited the podium after. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, did I forget to mention? Oh, Paris, obviously. Uh, Paris threw out a field, fell through out of field and finished in P8 after starting in P2 in a Red Bull. Um, after, well, it's basically like the one race that's deciding his future in that team when he goes from P2 to P8. Uh, the greatest look for him. Uh, Max uh, made his way through to P5. Uh, not quite a Recovery he maybe would have wished for, but still uh, outscored his nearest championship rival, so it's all fine for him. And uh, eventually uh, went to P4 because of uh, yes. And <laughs> all right, uh, let's talk about the the final few laps and the entire thing that happened after the race. Obviously, that's the main talking point. Uh, George George Russell. Uh, wow. <laughs> Wow! What? How did he? How did he manage to make those hearts work that well and eventually finish ahead of Lewis? I'm. Oh, and he made it himself. That's the most impressive thing. I mean, it wasn't like Mercedes were opted to put him on the same strategy as Lewis, right? But George said, like, think about the one stop. Yeah, let's do this, and and yeah, they just eventually listened to him, let him out. For like 33 laps on on those hard tires, and he actually made it work. Um, yeah, I, like five laps to go, I legit f thought that Lewis would just breeze past him, but when he actually caught up to him, it wasn't that easy. Like Lewis couldn't keep up with George getting like the greatest launch out of turn one ever, and just Lewis couldn't really uh, catch up to him at, at the end of the straight. And uh, that meant that Piastri was catching up, but that was that would eventually not be enough, as it would, they would finish with Russell in P1, Hamilton P2, and Piastri P3. Um, but yeah, um, unfortunately, sometimes it's just not your day, and sometimes just uh, things happen. Last year we had with it with Lewis, who was got disqualified from a P2 in Austin. This time it's a bit of a bit more painful. Especially since it's it was his uh, it was meant to be his third Grand Prix victory, but yeah, uh, <laughs> Mar marbles, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I'm not going to lie. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a huge, huge sheet for George. Uh, yeah, that's just out of his control, honestly. At that point, it's, it's the it's the team's job to ensure that the cars wave enough. Let's like put it like this: straight, straight up wave, wave enough, because the driver can say like, "Yeah, I want to get one on one stop." But if the team knows that they're that they're like on the range of being underweight, like they're they're right there on the limit, and you know, there's no there's no the pickup rudder thing uh, at the end of the race at Spa. As you mentioned earlier, the team knew that and they just, yeah, the execution wasn't the perfect and very, very unfortunate for George. He definitely deserved that victory. But yeah, um, at least it was won by a driver who also managed to have a pretty good race. So yeah, that, like, despite George DNFing, uh, not DNFing, uh, being disqualified, it's still a uh, so like it, it, imagine Russell would go in a two stop, like, it would be a straight up Lewis Hamilton victory, and no one would question it. But the way that George did a one stop made it work, actually won the race. It takes a bit off the Lewis's victory, but still, it's it's all right. Like if it was a driver that did like nothing and just inherited the win, it would be a bit different story. But yeah, still, still a good drive from uh from Lewis and uh, very very big uh, fortunate moment from from George but yeah um, so victory for Mercedes they seem to really be that uh, that force or third best team or whatever just up there with the McLarens and the Red Bulls and Ferrari sometimes like this weekend they weren't quite on their level I think it was more on uh, Charles overperforming and Sainz underperforming uh, but yeah, it's still Ferrari slacking a bit on them. I think they just closed the gap. Uh, the Mercedes did as a team. Um, so we could... 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I think we summed it up for for top eight, right? Like it was not the greatest race ever, but it also wasn't boring. Like we had something to look at for the race, so it's a pretty good race. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a much better season than last year. We can't complain. I still would it would be nice to have the races more uh more like yeah, more racy. Yeah, exactly what I meant. Like I would like to see some great battles and close like wheel to wheel action rather than drama and strategy nonsense or not like not like that George um uh, making that strategy was not good for the race excitement, but I would love to see the drivers battling for the win, if you know what I mean. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Let's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The DRS was shortened, and that kind of ruined the entire race, from my perspective. Like, the, all the drivers needed just a little bit more at the end of the straight, like, every single time. And it was like, yeah, if they wouldn't shorten it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, if you remember last year, we had DRS pretty much right after Eau Rouge. Like, they would go up the hill and just immediately o open DRS, but now they just went a little bit and they just opened DRS and couldn't quite overtake. And yeah, no, not the greatest thing. I also think they could add DRS perhaps to the back straight. Like, that's before the, before the last chicane. Uh, yeah, I know there's a turn that's pretty high speed and could be relatively dangerous, but these cars have so much downforce that it's ridiculous. Like, I, I don't really think that it would hurt. Like, I think actually it, it would bring more benefits than it wouldn't. And yeah, Spa could really use some improvement. Like, it's a historic track that has all the potential it could have, but still we don't get much, uh, don't get to see much racing on it, unfortunately. Yeah, um, all right. uh, we can go over to the bottom 10. Uh, there's nothing really much to talk about. I would say Ricardo, nice drive to P11, got uh, inherited the point in the end, uh, thanks to uh, well, uh, Russell being unfortunate. Uh, and after that, I don't really know who finished where, because it's pretty much like yeah, not, not very important, obviously. Uh, we have like Haas is finishing P13, P15, or P16, so could be the least impressive team, but whatever. Um, yep, uh, uh Grand Prix, uh, yeah, yeah, we got a PS3 for P2, I actually got Max for P4. <laughs> That's actually a crazy prediction. So I was so unsure of it uh, when, when I was predicting it. Uh, I got such a lucky disqualification there as well. I mean, I, it, it's it's also a weird situation because I'm 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 sad about Russell DNFing, but uh, scored uh, this being disqualified, but also brings in a point. So I'm like I'm like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. That's. 
two to one. I'm leading currently. Uh, Shaw's lap was Perez, yeah, Perez. It was a Red Bull, but not quite the the yeah. <laughs> he did something. He he showed up for qualifying uh, at least thanks to the car being very quick in the race. Not the greatest teamwork. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, uh, okay. All right, um, least impressive team. Least in um, you could argue for McLaren, perhaps. Like they were dominant in Hungary and just in the in the pack in the in this race, but not quite. Haas could be a good pick, I think. So, so yeah, we could go. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Alpine and Red Bull were definitely not the least impressive teams. Uh, least impressive driver. Well, uh, there's quite a few picks probably, uh, but not not a not a one clear one. I th I think there's not a clear least impressive driver pick, which makes it interesting because there could be some. Some discussions about this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you start to give arguments for your least impressive because I, I think you won the points for Perez and I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm afraid it was not confirmed, but it wasn't like not like uh, dismantled completely. Like, I, I could actually see that happening because I was pretty sure they were gonna replace Perez and then just like all the all the all the there were so many leads to that and just didn't happen. Ah, it seems so weird. Like, I don't quite believe the entire thing that we yeah we want to see Jacko do well on his circus and he's done well before. I don't quite believe that. Like, in his current form, it would be a miracle to for him to see like actually being up there, especially when we have three other teams at least on pace with Red Bull. Was the throw is a little bit behind, but they could still like. I think they're bringing upgrades for Singapore, right? Which is like in three races, so they could still still see them uh, going up there, winning a couple of races uh, towards the end of the season. I don't see Perez being anywhere near them. I just don't like. It. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was confirmed. I, I've seen a lot of rumors that it's that it, yeah, it's probably Jack doing because I think they were they were they really want to get signs, but signs already accepted the deal to Williams, which is one of the few things that we'll talk about the race. Uh, after the race, uh, I meant that, and, and yeah, just, I don't quite see 
the future for Perez. Like, I think if if they would replace him, I think they would replace him like not that uh, they would get into the RB or Torosa or whatever. They would just straight up get him out of Formula One and. Liberty Media saving him was probably the clutch. Like, that was probably like, like when uh, the richest man in Mexico steps in and uh, wants you in Formula One, you're probably <laughs> very lucky to be there. And uh, yeah, fortunate for Checo. He doesn't deserve to be in a Red Bull anymore, but good, good for him, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Him starting beef too is still like, yeah. Uh, it, it's be- it's, yeah, it, it's better than getting, getting, uh, crashing Q1 and, uh, then finishing outside the, po- outside the points. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, Perez is said <laughs> Sonoda maybe. To be fair, still beat his teammate. Oh, they didn't actually. He finished. You know, no, no, no. He got a one extra stop for some reason, like, like a third pit stop. I, I, I was thinking, what the hell is this strategy? Because <laughs> he, he was thinking like he could be finished like near near P twelve, but then he just pit again. I, I don't know what has were thinking. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Like when I think about it as a whole, uh, Norris still outqualified Oscar, and yeah, he, he screwed up. Uh, I already mentioned that quite a couple of times, but yeah, I I just don't know. I. It's 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 not it's not a good drive, but is it the worst drive in the entire field? Uh, I, I I wouldn't say so. Just... That's my prediction. I, I still haven't expressed my thoughts about it. So I actually probably would give it to Snowda if I was neutral but as i signed in my pick i i, I guess i have to try to get that point um yeah s- <laughs> they just they straight up just confirming my bias <laughs> okay i wasn't the smartest movie but okay okay uh, let's argue that sunoda had a penalty so he didn't have the like he didn't have a reason to actually compete in qualifying because uh, he would start last either way. And in the race, it was very difficult to overtake. So P17 from like P78 at the start it was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. Was it a good try? <laughs> uh, okay, try it. Never mind. Uh, all right, science. 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 Science was. Not very impressive. Yeah, it wasn't. But ah, uh, we st- like the way that he actually took Checo at, at the end. Like, no, why well, could have finished behind Checo? It would be like straight up point. But uh, now that I, 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 I could be 
I could be an arse and actually take a point or a good Snowda. I don't know what to do, honestly. Uh, he, he, he got beaten. Yeah, it, that, that's the thing that it's like for me personally, if I was against myself, I would not give myself points, but I also if I would be myself against myself, I would give myself the point. It's it's a very strange situation that I'm in. I, I don't know what to do. I, I guess I'll have to let you pick the least impressive driver. So I I already cursed myself, as you said. I'll, I'll, <laughs> okay, okay, buddy, okay. Um, okay, no, no points, I guess, no points. What, what can I do? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> didn't you get it mixed up? Uh, he was he was not teammates with Ricardo. I think at all in Formula One. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Uh, no, he he was there twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen. Uh, Ricardo went there, so Ricardo actually it's uh, uh, replaced Science at Renault. Yeah, he got beaten by Hulkenberg. That's uh, interesting to mention because, yeah, well, uh, Hulkenberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, yeah you, that's great to say. Honestly, you should keep it up. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I came to a realization that we actually may be soulmates. <laughs> what the hell? Like, I. Like uh, literally, the first thing that I rooted for was Renault. I'm not joking. Like I literally, I had a Ricardo cap, but like back when he was at Renault, like Okenberg was my favorite driver from 2017 onwards. We slowed down and got replaced. Renault got changed to Alpine, and I just immediately switched to McLaren because I still had Ricardo in there. And then now I'm, I don't, I don't have a favorite team. I just have Okenberg. <laughs> wow okay uh okay uh, yeah alpine is like i, I like now in uh, with the benefit of hindsight i actually hate the decision to rebrand to Renault. Uh, sorry to, to alpine such a stupid decision that actually ruined their reputation even more and now it's just the just the corpse of the team that you it used to be honestly it's every, Yeah, yeah. The, the Frenchness is disappearing as just the. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm really, really sad about the team that I used to root for not being competent or not being there. Just and for me, Renault ended in 2020, like 2021, when Alpine arrived. I just straight up, yeah, this is not my team anymore. And, um. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> I uh, okay. I probably I probably know what I'm what I think about their livery because uh, you know my channel branding <laughs> and the, the Renault livery uh, is is still in my heart. It's uh, it's actually like okay. I'm gonna be real with you. If it wasn't for Renault in 2017, that's probably I wouldn't have a yellow channel branding <laughs> probably because <laughs> i really love the combination of black and yellow and they, they just became like part, part of me 
like yellow was a really good color for me, but then it became my favorite favorite color, and I just like based everything on it. And now when I think about it, it is su such a huge like uh down well, not downfall uh, the butterfly effect. Like imagine how many things would change if the <laughs> if the red was a different color in my life. Yeah. Uh, probably getting a bit personal, but yeah, Renault had had a beautiful car. Unfortunately, it's gone. It's now we have the Alpine, which is well the opposite of a beautiful car. It's uh, it doesn't have paint on it. I, although this weekend was it had a pretty decent livery, but wasn't. I mean, it wasn't original. It was. It looked like the the Sauber of last year, like the Alfa Romeo, like <laughs> from the Prana. From the sides, like, yeah, it looked like it was like the paint ripped off. It was probably the effect of for the, for the entire movie thing. I, I'm not really in, uh, in the, into this kind of stuff, so I don't know the the context. But I guess uh, they did a all right promo on their car, I guess. But this this suits were actually pretty good. Like Gasly in that in that race suit was. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Uh, okay, that's my probably stuff. Okay, um, most impress, most impressive team, most impressive team. Uh, okay, let, let me, can I can I go first? Ferrari. Ferrari to be up there with the other three teams for the first time since. Whenever uh, I don't even know when it was the last time we saw Ferraris battling for the win. Like when I think about it, Charles was leading for two laps, and yeah, Lewis overtook him, but then Charles wasn't like falling behind by a second lap. He was still very close behind him. Like at one point, throughout the half of the race, Charles was like one and a half seconds behind Lewis. It was not. I like, uh, you could say it was Charles doing really well, but also. You cannot say that because I didn't get a point for cycling the person driver, so it's all Ferrari. <laughs> the most impressive team. <laughs> Alright, uh... It's, uh, what other team would you pick? Honestly, I don't, I don't think there's a team. You, you, you could... You could you could argue for Mercedes, but I also screwed Russell over, so they immediately get off, like... If they would finish 1-2, then sure, it's Mercedes, but no, no, no. They didn't finish 1-2, Russell got disqualified, and this is not the greatest thing for Mercedes. Alright, glad we agree. As we probably will not agree on this one. Uh, <laughs> okay, go first. Most impressive driver. <laughs> That's why I'm putting it first. <laughs> yep. Um, not qu not quite where he finished. So, uh, <laughs> every driver won the race. Technically, but on track, it wasn't the case. I I said that the, they were not the most impressive team.
I didn't mean it like I'm I'm praising Mercedes. I, I wanted to praise Russell for his absolutely crazy masterclass of a strategy and execution that was in the race, which. Honestly, I am. I honestly, am. I'm. I, w I could not believe my eyes. I, ten laps to go, I was like, "Yeah, Russ is probably going to fall behind Piastri." But how? The, the, yeah, yeah. Hamilton had a great weekend, but that, that was so impressive for Russell to what to do that instead ahead of his teammate. Like when you think about it, the amount of pressure he must have had on the, such an old tires. Uh, I, I, that was unbelievable. I, That's qualified because of his team, wasn't because of uh, him. Yeah, like, him plus a car, you mean that? So, you think that he him not having a breakfast <laughs> is costing him the most impressive driver. Look, uh, I'm just saying, I'm not giving a Hamilton if you not if, if you don't give him signs. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's it, <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, like yeah, just it's how it's played, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, I, uh, I I sat on a sleigh from yeah but it's due to something like yeah, that's not his fault. Like he didn't didn't drive into Lewis and drive, run him on track and crash into him. He just yeah, but he wouldn't get disqualified if it wasn't for the circuit specifically. Yeah, I mean it's just that it was it was not his fault. Uh, how, how are you supposed to know if you're m meant to eat one and a half kilos of food before the race? Like, <laughs> but yeah, he is kind of disqualified, but. It doesn't take off of his win. Honestly, Max is a good child for the most impressive driver as well. Like when I think about it, Max qualify like miles ahead of everyone started p11 finishing p4 that's a pretty good drive there as well uh gotta shout out that as well uh, fernando alonso on a one stop as well p9 uh in the end pretty good drive there as well um right <laughs> uh no that, 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 that's the same reason why I wouldn't give Norris the, the least impressive driver. Like, I, I cannot give it to Oscar because he wasn't like... He wasn't the... His race was better, but Norris's qualifying was better, and it's just... Yeah. Uh, I, I, how the qualifying was... Better, yeah. Russell's... Russell's race was technically better because, I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, he qualified like two places behind his teammate. Uh, 
Oh yeah, they were. They are. I mean, it was still very close and qualifying. To be fair, between them. Yeah, uh, it's obviously it's a very it's a very long circuit spice, right? And especially in the way like the <laughs> the gaps are very very big. <laughs> Like I said before, I, I, I'm willing to give you Hamilton if you give me signs. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a win-win scenario. We go for, we both get the point. <laughs> Yeah, that's great, you but that I've heard of being present. <laughs> he was the great, great tiebreaker. Oh my god. But I'm mostly the, the one that's backing off. I really don't want it because I'm already like four or five points behind. It's ten races to go. I need to catch up. <laughs> yeah. I, I cannot I can I cannot be on Doris. I cannot let a win slip through my fingers. I just <laughs> I need <laughs> Oh my god. But it wasn't his fault, like <laughs> <laughs> you you really willing to give up a point rather than give it to both of us? <laughs> but that, that actually was the case when you think about it. Was it? <laughs> oh my god! Why am I? Why am I being Lana Norris in uh, in this situation again? Yeah. Okay. I... All right. All right. If you're damning Max or stopping mindset, I I I give up. We're tied for this Grand Prix. Okay. I'm just. I, now I know how loud I felt after the race, honestly. <laughs> it's not a good feeling, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Why did I, why did I say Sudo that was the least impressive? I actually thought in my head that if, if I would like not give it straight to science, maybe you would actually like, convince me that it's science. So I could give you Hamilton and I would all be happy, but instead you went with Lando and it caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have been biased from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, screw my uh, fair and uh, sportsman-like <laughs> self. Uh, Okay, okay, fair enough. GG's, it's, it's tied for this Grand Prix. And you're five points ahead then. Alright, um, because we can get to the to the driver... Tr well, not dri not just driver, but the, the silly season announcements. Uh, starting off with, obviously, the one big one, Science Tim Williams, that you already mentioned quite a bit. Um, you already got... I think you get your thoughts on it, right? So, uh, I guess, uh, 
Is there a mid-season driver? <laughs> I think this is... I mean, it's... Because we did ratings for... Well, we did ratings for every eight races, and we... I mean, we need to have to do two races, like the, the Netherlands and Italy. So, uh, we can... Honestly, I have some ideas. Well, I'll, I will not spoil them yet. Okay, um, Williams, science to Williams. Uh, I pretty much agree with everything you said before. Um, it's a great to have finally a competent teammate next to Alba so we can actually see if he has improved uh, over his time at Red Bull after getting dropped and uh, obviously got back to Williams. Uh, destroyed Latifi, then Sergeant got in, destroyed him as well. But those are the benchmarks, and science is a amazing benchmark. That's exactly what I wanted uh, before. I actually didn't think that was actually it would actually happen. Like I, I thought both Audi and uh, an Alpine were more likely scenarios for him to go to. But yeah, he chose Williams, and I got a bit good job, James Wobbles. You got like Albon and Science. Team pairing, driver pairing, sorry, for a team that's ninth in constructors right now. <laughs> like, imagine that. Like, those are pretty, pretty, pretty good job on on that side. Uh, obviously, keeping Albon uh, on there and getting Sainz in, who's obviously a proven race winner as well. It's a that's a pretty decent lineup uh, for uh, for a midfield team. So good job, James. And yeah, uh, maybe we could see Williams. Good in 2026, perhaps. So, yeah, um, maybe good future ahead of them, uh, perhaps. All right. Uh, the second one was the new Alpine team principal. Actually, don't know anything about it. I don't think it's that important to mention as they are changing team principles pretty much every week. <laughs> uh, do you do you want to say anything about it? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. The the third one um, is Red Bull allegedly keeping Perez in, thanks to Liberty Media uh, stepping in. Uh, they're meant to replace him with Daniel for for the next Grand Prix, which is in the Netherlands. Max and Daniel left the left the circuit smiling together on a plane. Uh, pretty much everyone expected to announcement to come, but then, yeah, it everything seems so sketchy that I almost can't believe it's untrue. Like, it it makes sense, but I also don't want to see it happening. Like, uh, like if if money saves a driver in Formula One, it's pretty much a last roll situation. I I really don't like to see this happening. I'm I, I like I don't dislike Perez. Like he's he's a good guy. I I, I don't feel bad. Like I, I I I don't dislike him, but I also don't think he set a Red Bull seat and getting getting in and uh, keeping in that seat in, only because of money. Basically, it's just yeah, that's not it. Uh, I even uh, I'm not saying Ricardo deserves the Red Bull seat, but if they're not bringing in. Yuki, obviously for because that's a they 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 just don't want to get Yuki. That's uh that's clear for everyone. And Lawson is probably a, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and Lawson is probably okay. Okay. I mean, uh, al allegedly racist. The helmet Marco. <laughs> okay. Uh, obviously, uh, there's Lawson as well. Who's a very long shot for that Red Bull seat? Uh, I would love to see him in that uh, in the Toro Rosso, but uh, it looks like Lawson could very well end up without a seat for twenty twenty five, which is yeah, not the not not the greatest thing, especially after we both praised him last year after the sub in races. Like he he spent like four or five races in the Formula One, basically after no testing, no preparation. Performed almost at the level of Sonoda. Like there are some very impressive moments, and it's still not even considered for the other teams. Like, yeah, mm. 
I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I'll, I'll just start for Lawson. If he ends up without a seed because of this situation, it's it's a shame. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Breaking news, Max Verstappen going to Mercedes. <laughs> okay, that's a really long shot as well. But I would not write it off, but it's I've still like if if Red Bull after summer break, if Red Bull falls behind the other three teams, like imagine Max getting consistent P5s and Perez finishing outside of points. We could see Max perhaps switching off to Mercedes because I'm pretty sure he has some clauses in his contract that he can leave whenever he feels like his car not, is not good enough or something. Uh, they obviously gave him a, a huge contract for a lot of money for eight years uh, back in 2020, I think. So, so yeah, he has to have some clauses in his contract, exactly uh, making him able to move teams. But it's also... Mercedes situation is difficult because Antonelli is like so hyped up and prepared for that seat at this point that it would also I would also feel bad for him to not be paired in Mercedes after everyone's saying it's uh, everyone's promising him he's gonna be there. He's getting a lot of testing as well. He just won like two F two races uh, in two weekends. I would love to see him. Like Antonelli in Williams, but now the Carlos is in there. I, I, I don't know if he, if Max decides to go to Mercedes. Like Antonelli's not in F one. That's straight up the case because there's just not enough seats, uh, especially for uh, for the Liam Lawson case as well. If Jack Duan is getting into Formula One, that's already getting all the driver out of the sport. Like even Bottas is not secure to see, despite him having a very underrated season, in my opinion. Uh, Wesley Magnuson is out, Sargent is out, uh, Perez should be out after the season at least. But still not enough seats, and like I said, not, not enough teams on the grid to fill, to fill, fill that row. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for, for Red Bull, um, fortunately. Oh, John, yeah, Jonathan Wheatley. Uh, that was the last, like, last bit of news that I wanted to cover. <laughs> okay, uh, and we can go to the dad. It's obviously the the Red Bull sporting director, a very very high figure in Red Bull, being there for uh, for two decades and was allegedly meant to be the replacement for Christian Horner if he was to man uh, was to be replaced. But Christian Horner got backed up by the fine owners, well, 51% or whatever, the majority um, saved him. Christian is losing his team slowly but surely and could perhaps lose his star driver. We don't know. Um, but yeah, the situation at Red Bull is not looking good. But it's, what's looking good is that Audi, despite losing both Seidel and Hoffman, gained Benato, which, I mean, uh, I don't know what to feel about it, but definitely getting uh, Jonathan Wheatley to be the team principal for Audi is definitely is exciting, especially for me as a whole comic fan. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm looking forward to see him as a, in a team principal role. Cause, uh, yeah, 18 years in Red Bull, which is the second most, uh, maybe even the most uh, successful team now that Actually, Mercedes won, won eight constructors, right? And Red Bull will win their eighth this year. So probably could be on par with Mercedes for the success in the past two decades. 
So, so yeah, um, definitely knows how the how the championship team works like and could transfer out the into or hopefully at least a podium capable team because I really need a podium capable car for Hulkenberg <laughs> for twenty twenty six. I uh, my soul desperately needs it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, but did you, did you want to give your thoughts on that? Good, good thoughts. <laughs> Simple, but good uh, and straight to the point. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, that's. I think that's covered. We covered most of the news, right? That were not. There's some rumors, obviously, with Jack are doing, but and there's not been really specific to talk about. Um, yeah, that's it for 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 the reaction plus some news video for this one. And yeah, uh, the, we have some ideas for for some videos but, uh, for the summer break. Obviously, as there's a three or four week gap between the races, and we need to fill it with content as we will either bore bore to death. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thanks everyone for watching us. Uh, this long video, pretty long one. Actually, how how long have we been recording for? Uh, almost one and a quarter of an hour. It's quite long. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this through. Uh, I've been Sogan and uh, my mate Ajax. So hopefully, gonna do the right outro. So thanks everyone for watching and see you next time. See ya.